Hi all, today we are going to discuss about reactance grounding. So, as per IEEE standard, so reactance grounding means the grounding through an impedance. So, what is the meaning of the impedance? Because impedance will have the component R plus Jx. So, it is also mentioned there the principal element of which should be the reactive. That means, out of these two components, the resistance should be as minimal as possible and the reactance should be dominating or we can tell that it need not be an ideal inductor but practical inductor that means very minimum value of the resistance or the angle made by the current passing through this inductor should be lagging behind by approximately equal to 90 degrees phase shift that means nearly 88 degrees 87 degrees like that it should come when compared to the value of the resistance reactance should be more. So, before going to this, why should we go for the reactance grounding? Let us go through the resistance grounding which we studied in the last class. So, in the last class, we have seen the re resistance grounding. In the case of resistance grounding, the capacitor currents are there ICR and ICY and because of that, the resultant current we have seen this is equal to ICF. This is due to the capacitive currents of the healthy two phases, the resultant of those two and this will be my faulty phase voltage. So, because of the faulty phase voltage, the current lags behind it by some angle phi. This phi is decided by the value of the reactance that means x of your the transmission line, all the elements that are in the transmission line. Example, your transformers like machines and all the elements connected together that gives the reactance plus what is the resistance that is connected in the neutral circuit. Because of the combination of these two R plus Jx that decides the value of the angle phi. So, this angle will always be less than 90 degrees. So, some component of this IUF will be out of phase with the voltage or it is 90 degrees lagging behind the voltage and this current that we can call as IF sin phi, this will be opposing your capacitor currents. So, if this IF sin phi is exactly equal to ICF, so the resultant currents become zero or it cancels the capacitor currents. As it cancels the capacitor current, we know the arcing grounds mainly comes because of the capacitor currents only. That phenomenon of the arcing grounds will be completely eliminated. But as the value of the phi is less, so obviously in order to get the required value of IF sin phi, because phi is less, so automatically the value of IF required will be very high. So the fault current required will be very high and this fault current will return back through your fault resistance or your ground resistance because this is connected to neutral point. So, this fault current is passing, the current that is passing will be equal to IF minus ICF. This much value of current will pass. So, automatically because of this, there will be this current square multiplied by this neutral resistance. This much value of the heat is produced or continuous power loss will be there. That means the disadvantage of resistance grounding is there is huge power loss whenever the fault current is passing and this angle is not equal to 90 degrees. So, both components will be there in order to produce the given value of IF sin phi, the huge value of fault current should pass. These are the disadvantages of resistance grounding and let us assume your system is having more value of the capacitive components. So, more value of the capacitive components for example, let us assume if your system If your system has the example, the more capacitive current. So, capacitive current when it will be more, we can take the example of cables, then synchronous condensers, even for the case of the capacitor banks. And in fact, the transmission lines without the transformer. If the transformer is not there and only transmission line is there. So, in those cases, the capacitive currents will be dominating. When the capacitive currents are more, automatically the value of IF sin phi required will be more. So, automatically the fault current required will be more and hence more losses will be there in resistor. So, in order to avoid those losses, so we go for the reactance because we know the advantage of the reactor is the losses because resistance value is minimum I have already stated. So, automatically the losses will decrease. That means, in order to decrease the losses, we go for the reactance instead of the resistance. So, the element which is using the reactance instead of the resistance that is called as the reactance grounding. So, where this reactance grounding is used? The reactance grounding as usual as stated before for the voltages between 3.3 kV 
and 33 kV. In these voltages, generally the fault current will be very high if you go for solid grounding. So, in order to limit the fault current, we have to go for the resistance grounding or reactance grounding. So, for the case of resistance or the reactance grounding, I forget to tell this in last class, the value of X0 by X1 will be greater than 3.0. Then generally the value of X0 by X1 will be greater than 3.0 for the voltages between 3.3 kV to 33 kV. So, in these cases we go for reactance grounding or resistance grounding. If capacitive currents are more, we go for reactance grounding. If capacitive currents requirement is less, then we can go for resistance grounding. So, let us see how the grounding will be there. So, these are my three phases. So, let us take the phases. These are my three phases and this is connected through a reactor. So, the value of the reactor is decided accordingly in order to limit the fault current because minimum value of the fault current is required so that your switch gear or equipment can detect the fault. That much current should pass. At the same time, advantage of reactor, I told you, there will be no loss. That is the advantage. So, I am taking the second value of capacitor here. So, let us assume the current passing through this capacitor, I am taking as ICR because this is in the R phase. So, this is the Y phase. So, this current will be equal to ICY. Let us assume the fault has occurred here. So, there is a fault because of this the fault current is passing. So, the sum of these two currents, let us take that current I am taking as ICF. So, IC that means the capacitor current that is passing during the fault. So, all these current will return back through your neutral wire. So, agree with me. So, in this case, if you want to draw the phasor diagram, so phasor diagram will be like this. This is Vrn. This will be value of Vyn and this is my value of Vbn. As the reactor is connected here, almost the entire voltage will drop across this. The voltage will drop like this when the current is passing. So, that is why the voltage of the remaining two phases because of this reactor will rise to the line value because this is connected to ground obviously the entire voltage because current is passing it will drop across this reactor so your fault value or the voltage at your fault location i am representing by vf so automatically your remaining phase voltages are becoming equal to line voltages depending on the value of the reactants they can become up to line voltage or it may be little less than that always greater than 80 percent voltage will be there on each across each capacitor. So, now this value I can write as VRB and this value of the voltage will be equal to VYB. Because of VRB the capacitor current that comes will be leading this by 90 degrees. So, this is equal to ICR. Similarly, this because of the y, VYB, so the capacitor current passes. So, that will be equal to IY ICY, right? So, sum of these two currents will give my value of the resultant capacitor current which will be equal to ICF. So, in this case as the voltage becomes the line voltage, so automatically the each value of the capacitor current will be because they are connected to line voltage because between these two points the voltage that is connected is between R phase and the B phase. So, automatically it is a line voltage. So, automatically current becomes root 3 times respect to current and the resultant current becomes three times the value of the capacitive current under normal conditions. The capacitive current is more. So, now because of this Vf and the current is passing because the, this If will pass through this reactor, right? Through this reactor, it will return back like this. Because this extra reactance is also added, the net effect will be the reactance will be more in the system because it is more reactive and very less resistive. So, automatically the fault current will lag nearly by 90 degrees. So, we can approximate it as 90 degrees. Generally, it will be some 80 to 90 degrees. So, I am approximating it to be 90 degrees. So, this will be my fault current. So, now you can see this fault current is making 180 degrees phase shift with respect to your ICF. So, automatically this fault current will nullify your capacitive currents. When the capacitive currents are nullified, the effect of the arcing rounds are completely nullified. So, there is no sign component or other component required here because it is purely reactive. That is first advantage. Even when the fault current is passing, the current that passes will be equal to IF minus ICF. So, this much is passing. Even this much value of the current is passing, this multiplied square multiplied by resistance of this reactor. So, as the value of resistance is negligible, automatically 
this will be approximately equal to 0. There is no power loss in your reactor. But there is a disadvantage. Why should we go for resistance grounding? When the power loss is not there here, we should always go for the reactance grounding. We should not go for the resistance grounding. You agree with me? So why in which case we go for the reactance grounding? The only the case where the capacitor currents are more. So you will get doubt why. The reason is if you are going for the reactance grounding, let us assume whenever some lightning strokes falls on your system. So the wave should pa pass through the respective phase. And generally it passes through ground through this. But whenever the lightning surge is passing here, because we know the property of the inductor, we have seen in our previous section that switching transients. So when the wave comes here, the inductor initially acts as a open circuit. So entire wave will be reflected back. When the wave is reflected back, the voltage becomes double. And because of this cumulative phenomena, the switching transients or the surges will be very high if you are going for the reactance grounding. Your system should be able to withstand that. That is a major limitation of going for the reactance grounding. So let us try to summarize what are the features we have observed for the reactance grounding. So first one is it provides the satisfactory relaying as because why it is provided the satisfactory relaying because fault current can be adjusted. The fault current can be adjusted similar to that of the resistance. The fault current can be adjusted that equal to nearly equal to the largest rating machine so that your whatever this relays or other things are provided they can easily detect it and isolate it and second advantage when compared to that of the resistance grounding the minimum value of the fault current required that is less in this case so automatically there will be reduced interference with the neighboring communication lines that is the advantage and minimum losses will be there during the fault and arcing grounds are eliminated because capacitive current is completely eliminated. So transient ground faults are converted to controlled ground faults. Controlled ground faults means the fault current can be easily controlled. The same advantage is there in the resistance grounding also. So voltages of the healthy phases are increased greater than 0.8 times of EL. So automatically more insulation required and higher rating of the arrestor is required. And same thing is applicable for the case of resistance also. Up to here they are same. But here there is a limitation when compared to the resistance grounding. That is more surges will be there during switching or lightening operation as a reactance act as a open circuit initially. So but what are the applications of this reactance grounding? This reactance grounding is used where the capacitive currents are more in applications such as the transmission lines, cables, synchronous condenser, capacitor banks, etc. In these applications, we go for the reactance grounding. There is no hard and fast rule whether we have to decide the resistance grounding or reactance grounding. The application mainly depends on how much value of the capacitive currents are there. If capacitive currents are more, then we go for the reactance grounding. If capacitive currents are less, we go for the resistance grounding. Going for reactance grounding, the disadvantage is the switching transients will be more. But the advantage is the power loss in the reactor is very less. But we may worry about the loss, but we know that within 30 seconds your relay will operate. That means the power loss will be there for 30 seconds only. That's why we are not concerned so much about the power loss in the resistor. The major concern is the capacitive currents. So compensation of the capacitive currents. That's why wherever the capacitive currents are more, we prefer to go for reactance. Otherwise, a resistance grounding. I hope the reactance grounding is completely clear to you. So next class, we are going to see the Petrus and coil grounding or it is also called as a resonant grounding. So in which that we can tune the coil in such a way that exactly the fault current will be compensating the value of the capacitive currents so that the there will be no problem in the system. No transients will come in the system. So how that comes and other things we are going to see in the tomorrow's class. I hope everything is clear till now. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.